In 2013, on a quiet night, Evan Yu sat at his desk, staring at lines of code. He wasn't building for fame or fortune, he was solving a personal frustration. The JavaScript frameworks he relied on were powerful but rigid, and they slowed him down. That night, Evan thought, what if there was something simpler, something that just worked? What began as a tiny experiment would go on to revolutionize web development, competing with giants like Facebook's React and Google's Angular. This is the story of Vue.js, a framework born from one developer's passion, shaped by a global community and used by millions worldwide. Evan Yu's journey started long before that fateful night in 2013. He studied at Parsons School of Design, where he pursued an MFA in design and technology. The program was a perfect blend of design, code, and new media art. It was there that he first encountered JavaScript and began experimenting with interactive web projects. One of his standout projects was a clone of the popular Clear app, a to-do list application known for its innovative swipe-to-complete gesture. Using web technologies, Evan recreated the app, and it went viral on Hacker News. The buzz was electric, articles were written, forums lit up, and suddenly, Google Creative Lab came calling. Without even submitting a resume, Evan landed a dream job working on experimental projects that pushed the boundaries of web technology. At Google Creative Lab, Evan was tasked with imagining the future of technology. What if search interfaces became entirely voice-driven? What if walls could become interactive screens? These projects demanded custom UI solutions and deep interactivity, but existing frameworks weren't up to the task. AngularJS was too opinionated, dictating how developers should write their code. Backbone lacked the interactivity Evan needed. Evan recalls, I kept thinking, what if I could take the parts I loved about Angular and build something lightweight, something flexible? This question became the foundation for what would later be known as Vue.js. In July 2013, Evan began working on a personal project. Initially named Seed.js, it was meant to be a simple utility to sync the DOM with JavaScript objects. He wasn't trying to build a framework, just a tool for himself. When the time came to publish it, Evan discovered that CJS was already taken on NPM. Searching for inspiration, he typed Vue into Google Translate. The French translation, Vue, caught his eye. It was short, sleek, and available. In February 2014, Vue.js was officially announced. It was focused, intuitive, and flexible, exactly what Evan had envisioned. But the world didn't notice. Vue was a one-man project in a sea of JavaScript frameworks backed by corporate giants. For months, Vue remained under the radar, attracting only a small group of users. Critics were skeptical. It's just one guy. Can we trust this framework for production? But before we get into how Vue overcame the odds, let's talk about something that could help you on your own development journey. Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. If you're interested in mastering Vue.js or sharpening your front-end development skills, Skillshare has thousands of classes taught by industry experts. Whether you're a beginner looking to get started or an experienced developer aiming to refine your craft, one course I'd highly recommend is In-Depth Vue 3 by Chris Dixon, where you'll learn the fundamentals of Vue, how to build interactive applications, and even how to structure your projects for scalability. So whether you want to build your own web apps, level up your JavaScript skills, or explore new creative fields, Skillshare has something for you. The first 500 people to use my link in the description will receive a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Get started today! But everything changed in 2015 when Taylor Otwell, the creator of the popular PHP framework Laravel, discovered Vue. Frustrated by the complexity of React, Taylor tweeted, The learning React feels overwhelming. Vue.js is so much easier to pick up. That single tweet was a game changer. Laravel's community embraced Vue, giving it a significant boost. Suddenly, developers were flocking to Vue for its simplicity and elegance. With the release of Vue.js 1 in October 2015, Evan Yu had achieved something remarkable, a lightweight, flexible framework that developers loved. But its popularity came with its own set of challenges. For one, the JavaScript ecosystem was fiercely competitive. React, backed by Facebook, and Angular, backed by Google, dominated the landscape. These frameworks weren't just popular, they were ecosystems with massive resources and corporate backing. By comparison, Vue was an independent project, led by a single developer. To compete, Vue needed to stand out, and it did, through technical elegance. Unlike Angular, which dictated a strict way of organizing code, and React, which required JSX and heavy tooling, Vue offered something refreshing, incremental adoption. Developers could use as little or as much of Vue as they needed. This flexibility became a core part of Vue's appeal. At its heart was Vue's reactivity system, a feature that allowed developers to bind data to the UI effortlessly. Evan designed Vue's reactivity system to track changes in JavaScript objects and update the DOM automatically, ensuring minimal updates and maximum performance. This wasn't just theoretical, it was practical. 
Developers could see the impact immediately. A small view app required only a few lines of JavaScript, no complicated build steps, and could run right out of the browser. While Vue gained traction, critics questioned its scalability and relevance. Could a framework built by one person compete with React and Angular? React introduced a declarative approach to building UIs, using JSX and a virtual DOM to update views efficiently. Angular, meanwhile, embraced a more opinionated, full-featured approach, offering everything from routing to dependency injection out of the box. Vue found its niche by striking a middle ground. Like React, Vue used a virtual DOM for efficient rendering. Like Angular, Vue offered features like directives for extending HTML and tools like Vue Router for managing routes. But unlike either, Vue's syntax was approachable and beginner-friendly. Developers didn't need to learn JSX or TypeScript to get started. As one developer put it, with Vue, you can write a simple app in Notepad. That's how accessible it is. Yet, Vue's simplicity wasn't just for beginners. Advanced developers appreciated its ability to scale. Features like computed properties, watches, and custom directives gave them the tools they needed to build complex applications. By 2018, Vue had become more than just a framework. It was a global phenomenon. But with this growth came new challenges. One of the biggest was balancing innovation with stability. Developers loved Vue for its simplicity, but as web applications became more complex, they demanded new features. This led to one of Vue's most controversial decisions, the introduction of the Composition API in Vue 3. The Composition API was designed to address limitations in Vue's Options API, making it easier to share logic across components and create reusable code. But for many, this change felt like a betrayal. Long-time users argued that the Composition API made Vue more complex, comparing it unfavorably to React's hooks. The debates were intense, with some threatening to abandon Vue entirely. Evan responded thoughtfully, emphasizing that the Composition API was optional, and that Vue's core philosophy, simplicity, remained unchanged. While controversies raged, Vue continued to evolve. Each new version brought groundbreaking features. Vue also pushed the boundaries of performance, with its virtual DOM optimizations and tree-shaking capabilities in Vue 3. These improvements made Vue apps faster and leaner, even as the framework itself became more powerful. As Vue gained traction in China, it faced criticism from some Western developers who viewed it as China-centric. This wasn't entirely baseless. Vue's popularity in China skyrocketed thanks to its robust Chinese documentation and adoption by major companies like Alibaba and Tencent. But this success came with technical demands. Chinese companies needed Vue to handle massive-scale projects with billions of users and unpredictable networks. Vue delivered with its small size and efficient reactivity system, making it ideal for such environments. Critics who doubted Vue's scalability had their answers. As with any successful open source project, Vue has experienced its fair share of forks. Some developers, dissatisfied with certain design decisions, created their own versions of the framework. While this caused minor fragmentation, it also highlighted the flexibility and adaptability of Vue's architecture. These forks demonstrate how Vue's modular design empowers developers to customize and innovate within the framework. Evan remained committed to the core framework, ensuring that Vue stayed cohesive. To manage its growing user base, he expanded the core team, bringing in contributors from around the world. Together, they upheld Vue's high standards for documentation, tooling, and community support. By 2020, Vue had become the framework of choice for developers building user interfaces and single-page applications. Its adaptability made it suitable for a wide range of use cases, from personal projects to enterprise-level applications. Developers praised Vue for its ability to rapidly prototype ideas with minimal setup build robust, production-ready apps with advanced tools like Vue CLI and TypeScript support. For Evan Yu, the success of Vue was never about dominating the market. It was about creating a framework that developers genuinely enjoyed using. As he once said, I didn't build Vue for anyone else, I built it for me. And yet, by solving his own frustrations, Evan solved the frustrations of millions of developers worldwide. Today, Vue is more than just a framework. It's a testament to the power of simplicity, the resilience of open source communities, and the impact one person can have on the web development world.